Hi, this is Steve Fitch. I'm, I play with your Phoenix Symphony. Uh, my title is Associate Principal Timpanist, Percussionist, and Drum Set Performer. And I've been with the symphony for 37 years. And I'm going to stay there until I get it right. This is a, a kind of a new series the symphony is doing called Lifelong Learning. And I'm going to show you a couple things that I do to stay young as a performer, as a drummer. And I'm going to be talking predominantly today about the snare drum. It's kind of the center of all of our percussion playing. Think of it like a drum set, right? The, at the core of that drum set is that snare drum. And it's really uh, a lot of what we do technically uh, for all the instruments that we play, we work on on this instrument. So I'm gonna play a couple of short warm-ups for you um, just to show you how I, I like to warm up. And uh, that's got a lot of paradiddles in it and paradiddle diddles. And those are paradiddle, 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 paradiddle. Okay. And here's a bit of a flam warm up uh, from Fred Sanford. So there's a lot of ways to, to, to practice the drum. Um, we have things called rudiments, they're kind of like the scales of drumming. Uh, the double stroke roll, there's two on each hand. There's a single stroke roll, one on each hand. Um, we mentioned the paradiddle and the flams. Flams are just a little bit of an ornament, a little bit of a thickening of the downbeat with a one grace note. <clears throat> well, what I want to talk about today is what some people call the fountain of youth of drumming. It's the molar system. Uh, Sanford Augustus Molar didn't invent this system. He, and he says that, he didn't invent it. He observed Civil War drummers and what they were doing with their arms when they were playing. They had to play outdoors in terrible conditions all day long. And some of them started listening to their bodies and doing the right thing for their body. So here's a little bit of molar technique. Okay, that's a molar three. Now, what's happening here is I'm playing one note and then through the use of arm movement, starting at the shoulder and picking the elbow up, bringing the stick inward towards my body, I'm getting two more notes for free. I'm playing that first note, absolutely, letting it rebound, then moving my arm. And those second and third notes are absolutely for free. I'm not playing them. Then with the left. And that whipping that we do, leading into the notes that we play, that whipping negates tension in the arm. Here I'm offsetting the molar. Now, keep in mind, I'm only playing this. 
and I'm getting this. Hi Luna, that's my cat Luna. I don't know if she made it into the, the picture, uh, but she's not shy and uh, she might take over for me and finish this video. Um, so molar technique is, is using the entire arm to stay relaxed. You also, in, when, when you're doing molar correctly, you can't be holding the stick too tightly. It just doesn't work. It kind of changes where the fulcrum point is too. It changes it from, from here to more like that. Okay, so I love that you can't hold the sticks too firmly when you're playing molar. The traditional military way of playing snare drum straight up and down and into the drum. It's a militaristic thing because in military drumming, uh, it's all about precision and trying to get six, seven, eight, nine drummers playing exactly the same and in perfect rhythmic cleanliness, right? So they all sound like one drum. That's the military approach. So any drum corps, marching band, anything else, the roots of their, their activity came from the military. And I also don't think that the sound quality when you play that way is as good as with molar because Molar has a bit of a, tra the, the tip of the stick travels a little bit across the head, not a lot, but enough. As opposed to. So the, uh, the tip isn't constantly hitting in the same spot and having every subsequent note dampen the note that came before it. That gets kind of a a hammery kind of, this woodpeckery sound, whereas molar as you're doing this so so the drum resonates better because those are molar twos molar twos are playing one note and getting one for free if we offset it we get molar twos offset and the coolest thing about this is you can offset those molar twos four different ways. You can offset by playing one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And the only notes you're really playing are the one and the two. The three and the four are for free. Or you can play the two, three, two, three. Or the three, four, one, three, four, three, four. And the fourth one, four, one. Four one, four one. It's super economical and uh, easy on the body. You can play a lot faster uh, with much less tension or firmness of grip. Uh, I would rather play like like this than this. You can hear the difference even on this silly foam video. I'm sure you can hear the difference between those two. So I love molar. I'm uh, working on a technique now that combines uh, double strokes the way Freddie Gruber in Los Angeles played them. Going from French grip to American. And um, any three strokes, three, three notes in a row, I'm molaring those. When I do that, I feel like that's what my body wants to do, as opposed to playing the military way of just straight into the drum. Don't get me wrong, that's the best way to get seven drummers to play exactly together, okay? Because you can tell everybody your taps are this high, your accents are here, your grace notes are down here, and you can, that's called level, different levels, level system. And the piston stroke, straight up and down. But I like the molar, I like using my whole body, it just feels better. And I wanna be able to drum into my 90s and beyond. So we can do also molar fours.
offset and I'm just playing this and getting this. So I think it's, it's really, really an important technique for drummers to learn. Um, otherwise, we're just working too hard and not smart. A mm -hmm. little bit of a s shameless self-promotion here. One of the advantages to working in a symphony orchestra like the Phoenix Symphony, uh, with all my wonderful colleagues there, um, is that we have the summers off. And a lot of our uh, musicians go off to summer festivals, the Tetons or uh, Santa Fe Opera or Chautauqua or what have you. And sadly, many of those festivals have been canceled, or if not all of them. But so have the Olympics, so has basketball, so <laughs> everything is, has been canceled. Um, so, but even when, before COVID, we, uh, in the Phoenix Symphony, did not, we do not play in the summertime. And that has given me uh, the time to write books on drumming. So I've written a book called Fantastic Hands. Okay, and I use these at the Grand Canyon University with my students. The sequel to that book is called Flam Pathways to Drumming Fluency. A lot of great drummers and percussionists around the world gave me uh, testimonials in, in, in this one for all the books. Uh, my drum set books are Fantastic Feet. It's published by Mel Bay, so it's Fantastic Hands. And the sequel to that, Drum Set Freedom. With a nice little blurb here from Peter Erskine uh, giving me a testimonial. What I do with these drum set books is kind of unusual. I uh, train um, regular drummers with a double pedal. Uh, you don't have to have a double bass drum pedal to do these books. You can do it with a bass drum and a hi-hat. But um, I just find that we develop our skills north to south and try to equalize those forces so that the left foot knows what the right hand is doing when you're playing drum set because you've had the, made the feet do a lot of these snare drum type rudiments and, and things. I find that you have a better overall solidity to your playing and a better groove. Um, because the summers are long and hot, uh, I also wrote a couple of addendums to my drum set books. This one is uh, advanced swing systems to help people with their up-tempo swing and with their swing comping on drum set. And this one is called Tom Twisters. Now I've dedicated this one to my teacher at Oberlin, Mike Rosen, because he twisted me up with his marimba exercises a whole lot. So I'm twisting him up now with a thing called Tom Twisters. That's a book that gets you around the drum set in many, many different ways and uh, twists you up in a good way so that you have are, are getting to that part of the drum set with the most economical motion, okay? So this one's dedicated to my teacher at Oberlin, Michael, Ro Michael Rosen, and he's still teaching there, by the way. This one's dedicated to my teacher at Eastman School of Music, John Beck, John H. Beck. He's since retired, but he's still very active. and still teaches a course in percussion history at Eastman. Um, so that's been one of the joys of, of playing in the Phoenix Symphony for me is having those summers free to do projects like go to Europe. And for, I did that for about, uh, gosh, 14 years in the 90s and into 2005. Um, and that was a blast. I got to play with a percussion trio and play with North German Radio Orchestra and a bunch of other orchestras and record with the, with the trio and teach with the trio in Bayreuth, Germany. Uh, it was just a wonderful um, experience. And I met my wife over there. So um, uh, playing in the symphony has been super enriching for me uh, musically and uh, just in, in so many ways. I've been able to play and perform with some amazing guest artists and conductors and singers and dancers and, you, and, and what, have, what have you. So um, I'm looking forward to getting back with my colleagues and playing for you guys uh, uh, soon, sooner than later, I hope. But we want everyone to be safe. And uh, it's hard when you're a musician, and you can't go and perform. It's like you're all dressed up and with nowhere to go. But um, we're also blessed because my cello colleagues can 
practice Bach and, and, and play and even make recordings and upload them and, uh, to Facebook. And uh, our harpist, Heidi, uh, in the symphony has been doing that every day. Uh, pretty much every day, recording something on the harp and, and uploading it to Facebook. It's wonderful. Um, so we at least have our instruments to, uh, to practice and keep getting better at. And um, uh, I know the symphony is putting together a, an I Love You Arizona uh, tape using everybody in the symphony. Um, and that's going to be fun to hear. Uh, anyway, stay safe, everybody. I'm done talking right now and I hope you guys have uh, a wonderful summer and uh, and I hope to see you as soon as possible hopefully in the fall bye bye